Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. And today we are gonna be working on the advanced blog and CMS once again. This is gonna be episode number 20. Let's dive into it. Now, um, for this episode, we're actually not gonna be doing a ton, but I'm gonna go ahead and just film it so that you guys can see it, because you guys wanted to. So, um, our goal basically of this video is to get ready to start creating content on our CMS. So, basically we need to create database structure, set up the schema, for our database in order to store uh, blog posts. That's kind of my primary goal for this video. So I want to create um, the database structure to set up the blog posts and then maybe a few user interface elements and that's all I'm gonna do for this video. And then the next video, we're actually gonna set up the page to actually like create blog posts, okay? Um, so I'll probably have that be its own video. So this might be a short video. Um, there won't be as much in it, just so you guys know, I warned you ahead of time, but let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's get this project done. So, um, all right, so what we really need to do today is um, create a migration and set up some database structure to, in order to store our um, CMS posts, okay? These are basically just blog posts, so we're just gonna put some information in there to store these blog posts, and that's really it. And then I wanna set some stuff up here on the side. And what I wanna do here is do PHP Artisan make migration, and I want to, um, we're gonna make a migration for our posts table. So we're gonna say create posts, table like that and then we'll just do dash dash create equals posts just to kind of set that up as the posts table now let's head on over i think i have the project open somewhere here it is okay so now we've got database migrations and our post table just like that we have timestamps and increments pretty easy stuff let's go through and set these up so i actually already have kind of written down what i want in this table just kind of been i've been thinking about it for I don't know, an hour or so while working on some other stuff, but um, I've, I've got kind of, I think, some basic structure I'm gonna start with. So I'm not coming up with this on the top of my head. I sat down and wrote this down. So let's go through and set it up now. I've got it written over here. So um, the first thing I wanted to do was set up a slug for our URL. The slug is gonna be how we identify the post. So in the URL, we're gonna search by the slug instead of by like the ID number like we, we normally do with a lot of CRUD oriented things. So we're gonna search by the slug. And so to do the slug, we're gonna store that as a var car, which means it's gonna be limited to 255 characters, but that's okay. All right, so we'll call that the slug. Oh, sorry, you don't do var car, it's a string. Dude, I've made this error so many times where I'll write var car inside of these uh, migrations and it causes all sorts of issues. It's kind of hard to identify actually. It, it's kind of confusing. Okay, so now we're gonna create a unique index just because the slug has to be unique. We can't have duplicate slugs. Plus, because we're gonna be searching them on the page request, we want it to be as fast as possible because, um, we, so we want that index so it's fast because this is obviously gonna slow down your ability to send back a request to the user. So you want this to be instant as fast as possible. We want that index. Next thing um, we're gonna want is some sort of link to the author. So like, which will basically be a user. So it'll be linking to the a user, which is the author of the post. So in this case, we're gonna just do, um, it's gonna go to the author ID, the user ID type of thing. So we're just gonna do an integer. Um, we're gonna call it author ID. And then we can make this unsigned as well. And then let's go through, and the next one, we'll set up uh, the reference. Let's go ahead and do it now, actually. So down here below, let's set up uh, the uh, reference to it, the um, foreign key reference. So we'll say foreign I before E except after C. Is that right? Foreign? Foreign. Okay, so we're gonna set up a foreign key. It's going to be author ID, and then we'll set up, um, say it references the ID of the, is this working still? Okay, great. Um, references the ID on the users table, okay? Oh, and then we need to cascade. Um, so on delete, cascade, cascade, there we go. Um, I think we're good to go. So that'll set that up. Next we've got, um, for integers, let's see, we need to set up the title. So I want this to be a string as well. So this will be called title. That's obviously gonna be the title of the blog post. And then um, next I wanna have an excerpt that's like a quick brief kind of summary of it. We're gonna set that up as a text field. 
and then let's see then we want to have um let's see the content right and so the content we're going to set up as a long text like that just so we can keep it as long as possible and then um content status and type so for these are both both going to be integers status and then type Um, this also is an integer. And then um, both these can be unsigned. Um, okay, after that we've got the comment count. So this will just be an integer again. Technically, like I was looking at um, the way that WordPress does it and it's a big int. So we'll just do a big integer or big int. How do you do it here? I think it's big integer. Comment count. That's just gonna be, keep that easy. Let's make that unsigned as well. In fact, let's make, let's get rid of the unsigned portion of this. I might set this when it gets, like goes to the trash as negative one. So I kind of want that to be, well, these, this one can be unsigned. Okay, then let's do, um, let's see. Then the last thing I wanna do was a published at. So this is gonna be a date time. And this is going to be a third timestamp. We'll have three timestamps. We'll have created at, updated at, and then published at. And that's the third one, published at. And that's basically it. So that's what we want to do. Um, yep, that's a good good little setup for our schema. We got that going. Let's go ahead and close that. And There we go. Ran that migration. And now let's go just set up this really quick. And that'll be our video. Um, and then the next video, what we'll do is we'll start working on the ability to create new posts. We'll create a form so that you can submit new posts. That's kind of my idea. Um, so this will be a shorter video. All right, let's do, um, what am I doing here? HTTP controllers, and then let's do our uh, post controller. We need a controller, don't we? In fact, if we really wanted here, we could make a, I'm not gonna worry about it. We should have done a resource controller. Then let's go through, let's create a route for this. Um, routes, man, I am on, I cannot think straight. All right, struggling today. Let's do posts. Post controller. And we do want delete. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. There we go. So that'll go into our admin. So we'll, it'll be manage slash posts. Um, great, so that's all we need for that. And then let's go through into our um, resources here into that template and let's create it over there. So includes nav, manage. And now let's see on our sidebar, which is what this is, let's, we've got our dashboard, we've got our administration. Let's go now and set this up to be, we'll just copy all this. And let's create now a content section and then we're just gonna say, okay, we got our list here. We'll just say manage posts, or we'll just say posts. We'll call it blog posts. All right, that should be good. And then for our navigation, let's say is resource posts, like that. Okay, so let's uh, just test that real fast. Refresh, HTTP method. Oh, that's because we're not logged in. Should fix that. Now it's back there, manage. There we go. Now we have our blog post section, cool. Let's fix that one little error. That's actually not an error, but someone was mentioning that and it's causing a lot of confusion for the community. So I'll show you guys how to fix it. So when you get that HTTP error, the reason you're getting it, it's actually an expected, it's, some, it's actually okay, um, technically. What it really means is you're not logged in, so your session has expired or whatever. And you're trying to access a page and you're getting a 403 error because um, you don't have access to view that page. Now that's coming from Laratrust because the default settings or the settings that I set it to 
um, basically just runs an abort and uh, gives you a 403 error. So you get like an actual server error like that. So that's why you're getting that error. Really, all you needed to do is just log in. Your session has expired. Now, what most people would expect is they want to be able to redirect back to the login page. So let's just go ahead and do that. That way you don't actually get that nasty error because I've been getting lots of tweets and emails and um, GitHub issues about this and it's confusing a lot of people. So what you need to do is just go into the config settings for Laratrust. So here's Laratrust and down way at the bottom, you have a um, handling abort. So you can either just run an abort or you can do a redirect. I wanted to do an abort because I just didn't want people to know that that was a valid, that that's a valid, um, you know, URL, but you can do a redirect. So you can do redirect and then tell it where to redirect to. So in this case, we'll just do like slash login. So now if we go back, let's try, let's recreate this again. So let me log out and then let me try to go to that slash manage page again. And now it's going to redirect me to login. Whereas before, if we just undo this real quick, save it, refresh. Let's uh, now try to go to manage. Now we get the nasty error that's scaring everybody. So um, it, that's all it is. Just change it in here. Um, there we go, just like that. Now we've got it and now it should, um, if we refresh now, now it redirects you to login. So that's all it was. It was just basically giving you not access, it was just saying you don't have access to it. When you push this to production, you'd get a 403 error that says uh, forbidden is basically what you would get. So it would just indicate that. But because we're in uh, development, we're getting the HTTP like whoops error. That's all it is, not a big deal. Um, okay, great, so now that we got that, we're good to go. Um, I think that's all we're gonna do for this video today. Um, this is a video that normally I probably would have skipped over, but you guys wanted to see every damn video, so here it is. We're looking at every video. So, um, there we go. Um, oh, we need to make that, let's make that route work. So now let's go to posts. There we go, so now this takes us to the right place. Okay, well that's everything for this video today. It was gonna be a quick one. In the next video, what we're gonna do is when we go to blog posts, I want to have an interface. We'll do index later because there's no blog posts in the database, so it's kind of hard to um, stylize the index page. So we'll go create the create page. This will be where we actually create the blog post. So that's a pretty cool page. Um, and we'll probably set that up. The video after that will be the WYSIWYG and then we'll come back to the index page and a few other little things like that. So that's kind of my goal uh, for the next few videos. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. I will see you guys in the next video.